Yes, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, as question... the brothers, as the, the coordinator mentioned, that we first request if there any question from the non-Muslims. You know, the non-Muslims are our guest of honor today. So if there are any questions from the non-Muslims, you are most welcome to ask first. This is the opportunity. I'm young, I can take it. You can ask any questions. Even, even if it's attacking Islam, attacking me, attacking the Quran, inshallah, I'll try my level best to reply to the best of my ability. <laughs> Normally, after religious talk, you don't have question answer sessions, you know, because in the question answer session, you can be exposed. <coughs> Here we like it. We know we are on the haq, and we know Quran is on the haq. So if there are any non-Muslim would like to ask any questions, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, this is the opportunity. We'd like to give the first opportunity to our non-Muslim brothers and sisters. If there are any non-Muslim would like to ask a question, they can break the queue. Yes, brother, most welcome. Any non-Muslim brother? Is there any non-Muslim sister who would like to ask a question? <laughs> there may be some non-Muslim who may be shy to ask questions. Normally when we organize in India, as I told you, we have 20% non-Muslim. Yes. MashaAllah. Can, can we have from our organizer maybe a mic there, or it will be too far? If you can even keep wow. one more microphone on the top, if possible. Yeah. Or oh, there's one microphone here. Yeah. He have chosen the closest <laughs> place to be in. <laughs> it's fine, they will have another mic. <laughs> okay. Maybe meanwhile we take a question from the... Can someone give a microphone on the top, on the second floor? It would have been better if one microphone was placed on each floor. That should be a very, very good question, huh? <laughs> and a shahada, inshallah. <laughs> Yes, we have someone there. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it there. Okay. I will give to one of the organizers. Thank you. Uh, Ramadan Mubarak, uh, Dr. Nayak, I consider this my uh, great Ramadan gift, the opportunity of seeing you in flesh and blood after 15 years of watching so many of your shows on YouTube. It's a real honor, sir, and I wish you a, a great stay in Muscat and a very successful and enjoyable stay and success in your mission here. Uh, sir, I have a small uh, clarification I need from you. Uh, this What's is your good name, brother? Uh, my name is Pradeep. Uh, my name is Pradeep. I'm a marketing professional working in Oman, in, in Muscat. Yeah. Mashallah. So uh, my question is, uh, I, I just want a clarification. Uh, this is something that's been uh, percolating in my mind. Uh, I've heard you say that Islam is about submitting to his will. Sorry, Islam is? About submitting to God's will. Correct. God, sorry, I didn't God's get... will. God's will, yes. Yes. So in that context, uh, I, uh, this whole concept of offering dua, uh, prayer, supplication to God, asking him for something, whether it's blessings or good health or whatever, uh, isn't that strictly speaking against the concept of submitting to his will because if you have submitted to his will Then he decides and you accept whatever and keep going, but once you're asking him that is uh, Not just in Islam in any faith even even as a Hindu when I feel that when I'm asking God for something It is in a way it is I'm not really completely submitted myself to it. I just want your clarification on this matter Brother Pradeep Thank has you. asked a very good question Thank you, and brother, Pad brother Pradeep is one of the uh, one of uh, one of my proof that I said in my lecture that most of the non-Muslims hear my talk, they love me. I'd like to thank you, brother Pradeep. Thank you, thank you so much. He's been watching me for 15 years, and he's happy to see me live. 
and he asked a question that Islam means submitting your will. And a Muslim is a person who submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his question is that when we ask dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so isn't it contradictory that we are going against his will? And the answer is no, brother. Submitting the will means Allah has given you certain guidelines. Few do's and don'ts. Everything else is optional. You know, people think, oh, Islam is very strict. Thousands of do's and thousands of don'ts. No, no. Only few do's and few don'ts. Further, you should believe in Tawheed. You should offer Salah. You should give Zakat. Fast in the month of Ramadan. You have to do Hajj. Among the major do's and don'ts, there is a book called as Qabair, written by Imam al dhabi the 70 major sins, which includes even the major farais. So these 70 are the major do's and don'ts. Then there are minor do's and don'ts. Major do's means the major farais, offering salah, giving zakat, doing hajj. And the major haram is not to take interest, you should not gamble, you should not have alcohol, you should not bribe. So these are the major do's and don'ts. And the remaining is optional. You can become a doctor, you can become an engineer, you can become a dai, you can become a lawyer, you can become an engineer. If I do the dua to Allah, make me a dai, am I going against Allah's will? No. Yes, if I say, oh Allah, make me a robber, then there's a problem. Because Allah says you should not rob. So if your dua is going against the guidelines of the Quran, then I agree with you you are going against the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you cannot do a dua for doing something haram. You cannot do dua that I want to become an alcoholic. You cannot do a dua that I want to become a zani, I want to become an adulteress. You can do dua, doctor, engineer, lawyer, all are mubah. So your dua, if it's against the don'ts, then it is wrong. If your dua are not to do with his fard, I want to do dua that I don't want to offer salah. It's not accepted. So do you understand, brother? So if you do certain dua, very few dua, it will go against the will of Allah. And I don't know of any Muslim who does such dua. Maybe few here or there, if they're not in the right state of mind. But the other things which are mubah, you say, okay, I want to be rich, no problem. You can do dua which may not be very good, but you can do anything which is mubah. For example, you want to get a job in a good company, you can do dua to Allah. So, your dua is not going against the concept of submitting your will. It only goes if you do something which is against the commandment of Allah. Hope that answers the question, brother. <laughs> yes, brother, you can ask the next question. Hey, thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. That is very enlightening. Thank you. Anything else, brother? You have no, any no. other question? No, no, sir. There are a lot of questions, but uh, not now. No, for the non-Muslim, we have exception. <laughs> the brothers are one at a time, but for non-Muslim, they can ask a second question. No, no problem. Sir, I'll keep it for it. If you have any questions, you're most welcome. No, that urgent, sir. We'll come. Uh, maybe your show in uh, Sultan Qaboos University, I'll come. With Sorry? The next question. Maybe your next show, I'll come for your next speech at uh, SQ. If you want, you can ask, but any, any doubt, if you have any clarification regarding Islam, anything you feel which is wrong in Islam, this is your opportunity. What do, you, what do you feel is wrong with Islam? You can be comfortable here. You can attack Islam. You can attack Zakir. You can attack the Quran. What do you feel is wrong with Islam? I don't get you, sir. What's wrong? Sorry? No, nothing wrong in Islam. But uh, there is another. Uh, can I ask you? This is about the uh, Prophet. Peace to you. Peace be upon him. Any questions you can ask. No problem. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. Again, I, there is a particular. Uh, quotation uh, or a saying uh, something which uh, is attributed to Prophet Muhammad which I find it a little uncharacteristic sir I mean you're a doctor you know more than uh, anybody else that uh, leprosy as a disease is one of the least infectious diseases sorry which, which uh, le disease? leprosy leprosy is leprosy. a disease yes it's one of the least infectious diseases and spreads only through a prolonged contract I mean contact with the person who's affected so I read up a, uh, a statement which, which says that uh, He's, uh, the Prophet said, run away from a leper as you would run away from a lion. Mm -hmm. But I've also read that he has sat and actually dined and eaten food with a, a, a patient, a leprosy sufferer. 
Yes. So, I, but then uh, when you say Jesus says go heal the sick, and, and at the same time when you're when you're listening to this statement of uh, the prophet, is that I just want to check the veracity. Did he really say that, or was it being falsely attributed? And and the fact that he has actually partaken food with a with a leprosy sufferer. Uh, so I just want to know the truth of the matter. What uh, is that really a statement made by him? Uh, I don't know which hadith you're referring to. No, I, this is completely from the net and also from a, a, a movie I saw on the Netflix called The Rise of Ottoman Empire, where this quotation is mentioned. And, and it's, it's there, it's available on the net that he has mentioned something like this. The brother asked a question that there's a hadith of the Prophet that a person runs away from leprosy like a person runs away from a lion. And at the same time, the Prophet did share the food uh, with a leper. So what does the hadith mean? What do you have to understand? Uh, no, not that, sir. I just want to know whether the, the prophet really said that because somebody who can sit and have a saying, I mean, I'm sure because it's that, that sentence that run away from him, like uh, you run away from a lion, does it, it's, it's a little uncharacteristic uh, or uh, somewhat lacking in sensitivity, which I doubt whether he would have said it really. Or is it being falsely put on the net that something like this is... Uh, I'll brother ask you a question that is this hadith authentic hadith? Because yes, there are yes, many hadith yes, authentic yes. and there are zaif. But natural, when you get a hadith, you have to, if you give me the reference, I'll be in a better position. That is the reason I asked you the reference. Okay, okay. What uh, we understand, that all the hadith that are there in the Bukhari and the Muslim authentic, from the other Qutb sitta whether it be uh, uh, other hadith like Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, uh, Nasai, majority are Sahih, but not all. There are other books in which there are more zaif. So that is the reason when you get a hadith, you have to first analyze Okay. Whether the hadith is sahih or not. Okay. As far as this hadith is concerned, I have not checked up okay. with the sources whether it's a sahih or not. Okay. That is the reason asked you the reference. Okay. If you are going to refer it, it will be easy for I, me I'm to... sorry, I don't have the reference there, but I've just read this quote that's available on the net. And actually, I saw this quote in this Netflix series called Rise of Ottoman Empire. There is this particular quote where he talks about that the Ottoman Empire talks about what the Prophet said. And then that got me wondering, is that really there? So when I just went to the net and I found that it is there on the internet. But again, internet may not be always correct. There's so much of rubbish coming yes, on that. So. If it's a say hadith, we have to agree with it. If it's not authentic, then there are many hadith which are zaif also. Okay. Thank you. Thank is there you any so other question? No, no, sir. No, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, brother, uh, uh, brother, do you believe that there's one God? Uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out uh, anything that helps me, I'll believe, sir. God, one God, I don't know. My concept of God is evolving. I believe God can be truth, uh, like generation, organization, destruction, God. God. So I don't know. I'm still trying to find out, sir. And that's but the do you why believe I, in one God or do you believe multiple, multiple gods? No, I believe that God could be one. Deities could be many. I don't know whether I believe in God or I know there's God or I'm trying to figure out. I'm just trying to figure out. My request to you would be, brother, that you do read the Quran. Maybe you have read it. If you read the translation of the Quran, then many of your ans many of your queries will be answered. Sure, if sir. If you read the translation, you bring a great favor to me. Definitely, definitely, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Brother. Thank you so much, sir. So now we'll move to the to the sister's side. Do we have a question from the sister's side? Any question? Are and there maybe, any non-Muslim who would like to ask a question? Any non-Muslim sister would like to ask a question? No, this Muslim. Is there any non-Muslim brother, any other non-Muslim brother would like to ask a question? We'd like to give them the first opportunity. Any non-Muslim brother who has a query regarding Islam, regarding my talk? Any non-Muslim? Uh, so you can come on the microphone no, here. We have one on top there. Do you have a mic? Yes, I do. I yes. do have a mic. Please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. My name is Debbie and I have a question Sister, where for are you, you on, the, on the first floor or the second floor? Yeah, second floor. Okay. Yes. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I do have a question for you. Um, you told us that the Quran has problem like has solutions for the current problems we are facing as youth as people in the world at the moment so my question is as youths currently 
most of us are facing a lot of mental health issues. You're constantly in a battle within yourself, in your mind, and you feel like you do not have solutions to those problems, whether it's therapy and all these other things. So now my question is, how can the Quran help us in navigating that issue? And um, can you kindly advise me on some of the verses I could read from the Quran to help me with, you know, everything? The sister asked a very important question. <clears throat> The sister has rightly said, in today's world, there are many people who have anguish, who have mental problems, who have difficulty in thinking. So how can the Quran help them? And that's what I said in my talk, that the Quran is a solution to the problems of humanity. And especially, I told and I requested towards the end of my talk that you should read the Quran, the translation, in the language you understand the best. Because, I mean, my father was a psychiatrist. I'm a medical doctor, a general physician. But my father was a psychiatrist, Malla Grandim Janna. And, and he used to tell me also that if you read the, see, many a times, you yourself may not know what is troubling in your mind. And when you read the Quran, the Quran is a unique book. When you read the Quran, you find that many of the things you were thinking the reply is given in the Quran. And to read the full Quran will not take very long. Depending, if you want to read one chapter a day, it will take you 30 days. If you want to read two chapters a day, it will take you 15 days. If you read three chapters a day, it will take you 10 days. So, sister, my request to you would be that if you read the translation of the Quran slowly with understanding, because the Quran is unique, yes. depending upon what your problem is. As the Quran says, that verily, you will, your hearts will find serenity. And the Quran, it has many solutions, okay. which normally, if you read a Quran and I read, both may look at it at a different angle. The beauty of the Quran is that the same verse, if a layman reads it, he thinks a different way. If an intellectual reads it, he thinks in a different way. A scientist reads it, he thinks in a different way. That they read in the tafasir of the Quran, one verse, can have 20 meanings. And when a person who has problem, he thinks in his way. So when you read the Quran, <coughs> but naturally if you go to a person who specialized, and if you discuss with the person what is the problem, he may be able to guide you. Just generally if you ask me which verse to read, I say all the verses are good, mashallah. <laughs> but if you have a specific problem, like if you have a problem of alcoholism, the verse is Surah Maida chapter 5 verse 90. If you have a problem with economics, then it is Surah Tawbah, it is Surah Bakra chapter 2 verse 179. So I give a few examples in my talk. Okay. About poverty, about racism, about alcoholism, there's gambling. I can go on and on. So depending, and it's not good to talk about your problem in public generally, sister. You understand, no? Yeah. So what I would advise you, that generally, if you read the translation of the Quran, maybe two Jews a day, it may take an hour for you, or half an hour, maybe one juice a day, yeah. with understanding, surely. There are high chances the solution you'll find. If you don't find, you can surely ask with some of the Islamic Dawa centers, yeah. the people who are more well-versed, you know, depending upon, upon what the problem is, and they will be able, those people who are well-versed with the Quran, surely they will be able to guide you. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that may your mental anguish be completely dissolved, will completely go away. But even by listening to the recitation of the Quran, there are many non-Muslims who I know that when you hear the recitation of the Quran, and I ended my talk, sister, with the verse of the Quran of Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse number 81, which says, Wakul jalak wadakal batil, when truth is hurled again, falsehood, falsehood perishes. And for falsehood, is by nature bound to perish. And it continues that the Quran has been sent down as a mercy to the believers. That means only by hearing the Quran, many a times you get serenity. 
when I meet people who accepted Islam, they said, why accept Islam? I like the Azan. Did you understand? They said, no. It is unique. So everyone has its own reason for liking it. And when you read the translation, each verse has a different dimension. That is the beauty of the Quran. So my request to you would be the same, which I said in the end of my talk, that you owe it to yourself. You may have read many books in your life to get a degree, to get a bachelor's degree, or educate yourself. Why don't you read one more book? One book. It is a book from a creator. You read it in the language you understand the best, and inshallah, it will solve most of your problems. Hope that's Thank you, question. sir. Okay, any more non-Muslims from the brothers? Anyone else would like to pose a question? Anyone? Non-Muslim? From the sister's side, do we have anyone who would like to pose a question, a non-Muslim? We don't have any? He's? He would like to... Small. <laughs> okay, uh, please. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, my name is Muhammad Mustafa Khan. I'm from uh, Pakistan. I'm 10 years old. So I, I have a question. Um, What's your name, brother? Uh, Muhammad Mustafa Khan. Sorry? Uh, Muhammad Mustafa Khan. Muhammad Mustafa. Yes. Okay, fine. Yes, brother. Okay, uh, so uh, Hazrat Jibrail is uh, one of the most important angels. But. Uh, Sorry, the, can you speak a bit slowly and away from the mic? Uh, yes. Yes. Hazrat Jibrail is the, one of the most important angels, right? So uh, his job was to reveal the books to uh, the prophets. But now the revelation is over. So what does he do now? What's his job? <laughs> the, brother, the brother asked a very unique question. And sometimes, you know, the children, they ask the best questions. <laughs> and they ask the toughest questions. The young brother asked a question that one of the major role of Archangel Gabriel was to deliver the message of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the messengers. And he delivered the last and final message, the Quran, to, to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, since there's going to be no other message, what is his role now? At the point